Good morning, it's Friday morning, we're almost at the weekend and I'm looking forward to seeing many of you, if not all of you, in church on Sunday. Uh, we're looking at this passage from Mark 6 this week and we're drawing it to a conclusion this morning. And then on Sunday morning, we're going to be picking up the story again, really picking up in verse 30 of Mark 6. Uh, this passage that I know many of you are very familiar with, the feeding of the 5,000. Uh, a wonderful story which we're very familiar with. What we've been looking at this week has been a difficult passage and I have purposely uh, dwelt on the topic of, of sin because uh, we, we don't necessarily refer to sin very often. We don't talk about it very often, but it's been such a huge issue in this passage that I felt I wanted to spend some time concentrating on it. Uh, and if I've annoyed you, or for, uh, I, I ask for your forgiveness. If I've provoked you, I want you to think about it a little bit more. If I've challenged you by asking your, you, as I had to ask myself, to, to look deeply into yourself to see where there may be sin lurking that you haven't dealt with, then I, I encourage you to take that further and bring it to the Lord in prayer and to know that he can deal with any sin in our lives. Uh, and what a wonderful saviour we have that that's possible. And so there's encouragement in this passage as well. Yes, we talk about a, a, a very politically incorrect word, this word sin, but it's a very real world word and one which we need to deal with by bringing it to Jesus. So this morning we're, we're leaving the topic of sin slightly and we're really finishing with the, the last verse or so um, of this sad story of how John the Baptist lost his life. Uh, we know he lost his life because Herod made a promise he shouldn't have, uh, a rash promise that he couldn't fulfill in the heat of the moment, caught in a sense by not wanting to lose face amongst the uh, before the men who were all gathered in for his birthday party uh, and he, he said something he shouldn't have said but instead of taking it back instead of saying you know what I, I've gone too far this is wrong I'm not going to do it he gave in and John the Baptist lost his life because a demand was made for John's head in other words John's was John's tongue was stopped he was now not able to say anything against this relationship that Herod was in that he shouldn't have been in so there's this awful mess uh, John the Baptist is killed. Now, John the Baptist had his followers and his disciples that existed before Jesus came along. And we know that this, uh, this following that he had was a very strong following. But he also was able to direct them towards Jesus. And remember that this story is, in a sense, prior to Jesus' ministry. Taken. Now, this is happening before Jesus' ministry really became the, the ministry it was. There was a sense when Jesus' ministry started and Herod heard about his ministry, he wondered, was this John the Baptist come back to life? So at this stage, John the Baptist's disciples hadn't, in a sense, migrated across to follow Jesus as John wanted them to do. They were still John's disciples and they were still following him. And certainly he was a man who had wonderful disciples because they were, in many ways, the bedrock of what came later in Jesus' ministry. But we read what happened really at the end of that account, an historical account of what happened to Herod, what happened to John the Baptist, and, and really what happened to his disciples. Because we read there, uh, verse 27, And immediately the king sent an executioner with the orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard of it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. Now, this is a, a sad story because John the Baptist, we, we, we don't know what happened to his head. The mother was given the head. I'm sure she, she didn't prize it. I'm sure she was just glad to see that John was no longer saying things about her. But John's body was left where it lay, most likely. Nobody touched it. His head was taken off and his body lay there. And yet his disciples came and took his body. They knew what had happened to him. They knew that what had happened to him could happen to them. They were followers. They were a threat now because John was out of the picture. So the disciples were the next in line. And we know what happened to Jesus. Disciples after Jesus uh, ascended. Jesus' disciples went and started to proclaim Jesus. And because they were proclaiming Jesus, many of them faced death as well. And so the disciples were taking a chance. They were saying, this has happened to our rabbi. This has happened to the one that we were learning from. We can't just leave his body there. So we will identify ourselves with John in his death. We will take his body. We will give him a proper burial. 
that in a sense it looks like a throwaway line at the end of this passage about Herod and John the Baptist but it's not it's actually telling us so much more it's telling us that they valued the, their their relationship with John over anything that could happen to them they were prepared to say we still regard John the Baptist as someone important we still want to follow his teachings we still want to identify himself with him and they risked their lives by coming and taking his body and putting it in a tomb Mark makes reference to it because he knows in a sense what happens after Jesus death there's a sense for each one of us that we need to identify ourselves with Jesus Christ for many people in this world Jesus is a bad word Jesus is someone who simply points the finger. Jesus is someone who wants to change people's lives and take the fun out of their lives and replace the fun with rules and regulations. And for many people in the world, they don't want to know about Jesus. They're happy to, to use his name as a, a swear word, but they don't want to know about him. They don't want that personal relationship with him. In fact, they, they can be hostile to anyone who would claim to know Jesus. And so for us, because we as believers, as followers of Jesus, we must daily identify ourselves with Jesus. We must say, no, Jesus is, is my Lord. I, you're not going to turn me off him. I'm going to keep following him. I'm going to keep doing the things he's asked me to do because I love him. The disciples of John the Baptist could have stayed away. They could have said, look, it's too risky. Let's not take a chance. And in today's world, there might be a sense where you're maybe tempted from time to time to say, I'm not going to take a chance. I don't want people to know that I'm a follower of Jesus. I'm going to stay back uh, and quietly believe or going to pretend that uh, Jesus doesn't really matter to me. When all along we need to identify ourselves with Jesus because there's a world who needs to know about him. And they're not going to know about him from us unless we tell them. And if we know how important he is, we need to tell other people. The disciples weren't scared about being identified with John the Baptist who had just been murdered because of what he believed. We need to identify with Jesus, whether it's in our home, in our workplace, with our friends, whoever. And so you, I want to encourage you to think seriously about that. Don't deny him. Don't be like Peter the night Jesus was arrested and he denied him three times, but identify yourself with Jesus. And I would always say to you, if you're moving into a new group of people, a new group of friends, a new neighbourhood, a new school or whatever, identify yourself with Jesus very early on because it's so much easier to do it at the start than it is to somehow introduce him later on when people are confused and sort of, why didn't you tell us beforehand? Why, why the change now? If you, Jesus means enough to you, you will want to identify yourself with him. I trust you today to do so. Have a good weekend. Hopefully we'll see you on Sunday morning. God bless.